Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist as well as a certified diabetes educator. Welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, there's some videos below that I do want you to take a look at. So don't be shy, go ahead and look around. Familiarize yourself with my channel, with my videos, with my content, with my website, www.kimrosedietitian.com. And remember to comment, like, and subscribe. For my returning subscribers, Welcome. So today is actually part two of the nutrition questions and answers. Part one was done by Dr. Amy, which is my former internship director. So if you haven't watched part one, it's popping up right now. So don't hesitate to click on that video and get your questions answered. So let's just hop right into it without wasting any further time. So the first question I have is, what do you think about intermittent fasting? And as a dietitian, do you ever deal with people who have had an eating disorder so let me just answer that second question first no I've never dealt with an individual that has had an eating disorder there have been a few um, clients of mine that I thought they had an eating disorder but nothing was definitive it was not in their medical history so with intermittent fasting people practice this for various reasons it could be religious it could be political or they're just doing it for their quote-unquote health the claims of intermittent fasting is that it helps to reduce one's weight it helps to decrease cholesterol it helps to um, improve fasting glucose levels so these are the claims all the studies that I have looked at related to intermittent fasting have only been done in animals I haven't seen anything at this time that has been done on humans so I really feel that more research needs to be done the next question is what can I do now as an eighth grader to prepare to be a dietitian so all oh, this is really really good so let me tell you this story I had a friend in college and she was telling me when she was in middle school and high school her parents sent her to shadow a physician the physician was busy so the physician put her off on the dietitian so she was following the dietitian for weeks got to know what dietitians do and then decided you know what she wants to become a dietitian she doesn't want to become a doctor anymore so as an eighth grader see if there is someone that your school can link you up with if you guys have like a career day or a day that you can shadow a professional see if you can shadow a dietitian nutritionist so try to get in contact try to have your parents get in contact with them to ask them questions to see what they do on a day-to-day -day basis to see if this is something for you the next question that I have is how do you get a job directly after a master's I made a video about this before which is popping up now so go ahead and take a look at that there's a few strategies that I feel are helpful which I'm not going to reiterate in this video so go ahead and look at that the next question so what are your thoughts on supplements like vitamins for the everyday person b12 for vegans so I feel like I'm answering all these questions backwards. So B12, B12 comes from animal products. So individuals that do adhere to a vegan diet will have to take some type of supplementation. And the first part of the question says, what are my thoughts on supplements? So if you don't eat a nutritious diet that includes a lot of variety, you may not be getting all your micronutrients. So vitamins and minerals may be of assistance to you in getting some of those micronutrients, but the way that I personally see it, food should be the first option in order to get all your nutrients. Supplements can't take the place of an adequate diet. So the next question that I have is, what are your thoughts on low fat diets, cholesterol, good slash bad, grains, and dairy? Um, I'm not really too sure what what you mean by this but my thoughts on a low fat diet um, when I am dealing with some patients I do tell them it is recommended that they do adhere to a low fat diet cholesterol good slash bad I'm not sure what you mean by that either a certain amount of cholesterol is needed in our bodies to make hormones but when we do consume too much cholesterol it can have negative a negative effect on the body grains dairy products I think grains are okay dairy products is okay I mean I, I don't think food can be good or bad I don't necessarily like when people put those labels on food food does not have any reasoning skills to act bad or to act good the next question it says I'm currently a junior in high school and my dream is to become a RD when I enter college will I be able to meet all the requirements with a bachelor's degree before the 2024 change or will I have to continue and get a master's degree 
So for those of you that do not know, in 2024, there is a change that is going to take place in the field of nutrition and dietetics. So individuals that once had a bachelor's degree could go ahead and take the examination to become a registered dietitian, but in 2024, it's going to change, and now you are required to have a master's degree. So for that individual in that's a junior in high school, you're just gonna simply have to do the math. There's a few questions that you're gonna ask yourself such as number one, when you get to college, how many classes slash credit hours are you going to take? Are you gonna graduate early? Are you gonna slow things down a bit and just take 12 credit hours? So it really depends on your plan. If you were to go the traditional route and take 12 to 16 credit hours per semester, then from doing the math, I'm going to say no, you're going to go have to go ahead and get your master's degree. But if you're going to crunch your time, take a whole bunch of classes, a whole bunch of credit hours, then maybe, but it really depends because when you do that it's stressful you may not learn as much you may be overwhelmed so it really depends on your plan and additionally dr. Amy my internship director discussed this in part one so go ahead and watch that video about the 2024 change and her thoughts on it I thought it was very enlightening the next question that I have, what are some food cures for certain things like acid reflux, tiredness, stomach aches, and constipation? I don't think there's any food cures for these things, but there are some foods that can be of assistance. Like for instance, when you said acid reflux, there are some foods that can cause you to have acid reflux, such as spicy foods, greasy foods. So trying to maybe figure out why you have the acid reflux in the first place and if it is related to any of these spicy or greasy foods or caffeine or chocolate to kind of lay off of them. Tiredness, I don't know any foods which can cure tiredness, but tiredness is the result of many factors. So there's not really a food cure for that. The next thing is stomach aches. Stomach aches result from numerous things, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, you may have an ulcer. So what is the cause? And finally, constipation. So there's a few things that one can do to help their constipation. What is their constipation caused from though? Is it a medication or are you not drinking enough fluids or are you not taking enough fiber? So those are the things that I would say to address, but it's not necessarily a cure. The next question I have is eating according to your blood type, apple cider vinegar trend, banting your thoughts, please. So these are some things that I did address in a previous video, which is popping up now. These are fat diets. Um, I don't adhere to fad diets. They're not evidence-based. They're not credible. If you're interested in my whole entire spiel, go ahead and look at this video. Then. The next thing, also I have seen day in the life of dietitians and stuff, but I'm still wondering some things like, what are the things that you do as a dietitian? Do you make meal plans for specific people or is it something different? Making meal plans is only one aspect of my job. As you stated, you did see my day in the life of a dietitian. Just just in case other individuals may have not seen it, I'm going to put it up right here. Um, one of the biggest things that I do as a dietetic practitioner, I practice what is called medical nutrition therapy. And dietitians are the only ones that can practice medical nutrition therapy. So besides medical nutrition therapy, making meal plans, I do a lot of menu analysis. My job also entails managerial responsibilities. So that involves a lot of education of the staff. The next question I have is, these aren't too specific about nutrition. I think, I don't know, but what do you think of gluten and people being gluten free when they don't have celiac disease. What got you into studying nutrition, aside from wanting to help people, if that was going to be one of your answers, haha. -ha. The gluten aspect of your question, I did make a video about that before that is popping up now. Trends that were dishing in 2017, so go ahead and watch that. And what got me into studying nutrition, um, I think I said this in a previous video, but I honestly did not want to be a dietitian. I was actually double majoring in physical therapy as well as dietetics. And the more and more that I got into um, dietetics and I did an externship, I realized that I liked um, dietetics more than physical therapy. So guys, these are all your questions. Thank you for submitting them. As usual, remember to comment, like, and subscribe and share this video. Have a good day.